Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take A Bath Productions with another video helping you fix various things. In this video I'll be showing you how to set up and program this 8 device GE remote control. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, I wanted to mention a couple of things before I get into the heart of the matter. First thing you want to do is make sure the batteries are good. They go right here in the back. Easy to install. Just make sure you get them in the right way. And if you're interested, here's the model number. Location is right there. Now, I've had several comments about this in the past. People wonder why they can't program their remotes. Uh, sometimes the batteries are strong enough to make the lights flash, but they're too weak to program the remote correctly. So uh, that's the first thing I'd check if you're having any trouble. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that re the remote can retain its codes that you program in memory for up to 10 minutes while you're changing the batteries. Uh, so if you're changing the batteries, do it quickly. Have the new batteries ready, and um, otherwise you're going to have to do this whole procedure all over again. Okay, there's also a neat battery saver feature that'll shut down the remote if the button should get depressed, uh, uh, like in the cushions of a couch. See, I'm pushing the button here. It should shut down after about 8 to 10 seconds. There it went. Also, these colored buttons here are for uh, access to additional features for DVRs, cable box, um, Blu-ray, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to see the remote in more detail, Check out the description below and I'll post a link to the remote and also post a link to the codes. And at the end of the video, I'll also take still pictures and post the uh, code book at the end of the video too. Uh, this one happens to be model 24927. Okay, so there are two ways to program this remote. First is the direct code entry and second is the auto code search. Um, we're going to start with the direct code entry. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure your device is turned on. In my case, I'm working with a Sony TV, and I'll be using code 5321. Uh, using this code, everything works, including the menu. Um, if you get a code that's only partially working, for example, the power comes on, but the volume doesn't work or the input, try some other codes. Sometimes you have to try several codes in order to find one that works all the features. Okay, to access the menu on this TV, or any TV for that matter, um, you'll have to push the shift button here. You see the red light flashing? Now it's in shift mode. That allows these secondary buttons here to start working. And uh, this one is for menu. So, And then to get out of it, just push shift again. And there you have it. Okay, with the TV turned on, press and hold the setup button until you get the red light. Then press the device code. TV in my case, and then 5321. 5321. Okay, that's for the Sony TV. Uh, by the way, you can control any device from any one of these buttons. Uh, so if I wanted to program, for example, my uh, TV on my cable button, I could do that. The uh, Just do the same thing I just did and push cable instead of TV. Same code. Uh, this procedure comes in handy when you want to do the auxiliary 1 and 2 uh, because the auxiliary 1 and 2 can program anything that the other buttons can do too. Okay, just going to test the power on the TV. Alright, TV came on. Volume. Got volume up, down. Mute. Input. Yep, that's all working. And then menu, as I said before, push the uh, setup button, which is shift, and then menu. There we go. Push menu again, and then push shift again. There we go. Working fine. Okay, now let's put the uh, code in for the amp or the sound bar. Same thing, press setup till the red light comes on. I'm going to be using Auxiliary 1 in this case, but I could use AMP or any of the other keys, as I mentioned before. Auxiliary 1, and I'm working with a Bose soundbar, 0, 8, 8, 6. 
and I already tested it and it's working fine. Okay, next I'll quickly run through the auto code search method. Um, in this device I'll be exampling a TV and in order for this to work right you have to keep pointing the remote at the device the entire time that is running through the codes. If you turn the remote away from the device and you happen to hit your code the device is not going to respond and you're going to think that it just doesn't work. Okay, with the device on, push setup until the red light comes on as usual. Push your device button, in this case TV, and push power. Okay, it's running through the codes. There it is, every couple seconds. If you were doing this for a VCR or a DVD, you would go setup, DVR, or DVD, and then you would push play and not power, and then it'll do the same thing. It'll cycle through the codes. Okay, so we'll keep searching, we'll keep searching. Okay, let's say that we've been doing this for a minute and it, uh, it, found the, it found the code. Have your finger ready on the number one button before it gets to the next code. And, um, okay, there it, is, there it is, it responded, push one, number one. Okay, so the number one button locked in the code. Um, if you were doing this with a VCR or a DVD or something like that, you're gonna need a tape or a DVD in the uh, drive for, uh, for it to play. And when it gets to your remote, uh, when it gets to your device, the device is going to start playing, and then of course you still push number one to uh, stop the search at that point. And also, if you happen to miss your code, you can press the setup button to reverse the process and circle back around to your code. And then of course, when it gets there, you push one to stop the search. All right. Well, then after it responded, um, point the device at the remote and see if it responds as expected. And as if I mentioned before. Uh, the auto code search might only find a partial code and if it does if you get power but no volume or whatever um, you'll have to do this procedure all over again and then the next time you know not to stop on the first code that responds because that's the one that just didn't work so try the second code and so forth it could take a long time because there's a lot of codes in the memory uh, so this isn't of course the first choice of uh, how to set this remote up the direct code entry would be but uh, this is a good alternative Okay, so programming any other device can be done by one of the two methods that I've described here. If you happen to be using an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku, something that needs a Bluetooth or RF uh, remote signal, this remote won't work. This remote is infrared only. Um, my Roku does have both sensors. It has a uh, IR sensor on the front and it also, the factory remote is RF, so you can put it behind a TV or whatever. Um, if you've got a situation like that, this remote still won't work because it has to have a direct line of sight to get to the uh, device before it it'll work. The favorite function allows you to put up to 10 of your favorite channels in the remote's memory. Uh, something to keep in mind, you must select the device that controls your channels. Uh, for example, if you have a cable set-top box and a TV, you don't want to select the TV because the cable set-top box is the actual one that controls the channels. So uh, remember that when you're programming this. So to program this, uh, press and release the device button that you want to use. I'm going to use SAT for my dish network. And press and hold the setup button until the red light comes on. Okay. And then press the faves button. And then you're going to want to put in the, uh, you know, between 1 and 10, the channel number that you want to use. So I'm going to use 0. Since there's nothing in memory yet, the red light blinked once and it stayed on. And then just say, for example, weather channel 214 two, one, four. and then press the faves button again and it the light went out okay so to use this feature you'll press and release the faves button and then press zero there we go see it signaled it to go to 214 last but not least the master volume feature allows you to select a single device that the volume control always controls for example the remote can be in tv mode but the uh, volume buttons here will control the volume of the auxiliary or the amplifier instead of the TV. Okay, so to set this up, as always, press and hold sh um, setup. All right, red light came on. Press the device button that you want to always control the volume, the amp in my case. And then press and release the mute button. Mute button and then volume up. And that's it. So whenever this is in TV mode, that's going to run the uh, volume up and down on the amplifier. And uh, to test it, of course, you just want to
put your TV, uh, put the remote in TV mode, and then make sure that it runs the volume up and down on your amplifier. And to disable this feature, do the same thing in reverse. Setup, amp, mute, volume down instead of volume up. All right, well, that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, click on the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.